Hey guys, Justin here. I've compiled a list of all the full-time NASCAR drivers today that you can also see on the track in iRacing on a pretty consistent basis. Today we'll be going over the guys across all three series with some of the best stats in iRacing and also the best I rating. But if this video gets 200 likes, I'll make a part two which details some other guys like part-time drivers and also retired full-time cup drivers along with some of the biggest stars in our sport today who only get on iRacing every once in a while. All right, let's get right to it. Starting off with a guy whose name is so big it causes me to break my rules instantly. Of course, I'm talking about Dale Earnhardt Jr. While Dale's original account, which he used for the Pro Series back in the day, it sits at about a 7.6K, his account that he uses these days is Dale Earnhardt Jr., where you can see him a lot of the time in various different series. He's right now about a 4,600 I rating with a 13% win percentage. I've raced Dale a couple of times this year and both times what his real strengths are is saving tires. He'll start at the back a lot of the time, probably because it's more fun for him, and then just drive through the field because of how good he keeps his tires over a long run. Next up, we have a guy who everyone seems to have a story about, Derek Kress. After about 200 races this season alone in Oval, Derek is at about a 4,000 I rating with about a 15% win percentage lifetime and a 19% win percentage for this year. Derek is really known in the community for his ultra aggressive style of racing and honestly causing a lot of wrecks. He seems to have one of the highest incident per race you'll see on this list for sure, but also kind of in general for high racing. One memory I have racing with Derek was when he bump and run me at a short track in Arca and I got a little heated over the radio and he said, well, if you're that mad about it, get to my bumper and pay me back. And sure enough, he was faster than me, so I couldn't do anything about it. So fair enough, I guess. Good play to him. I don't really have any problems with Derek, but I also don't race him as much as some guys do who seem to have bigger issues with him. Next is another driver who you'll be seeing a lot if you drive in the top split of C-Fixed. And that would be Joshua Williams, driver for now back at DGM Motorsports in the Xfinity Series. Josh has about a 9% win percentage this year and at 15% win percentage lifetime and is very quick and C fixed. It's very hard to finish in front of him most of the time. It's people like Josh who you kind of take their talent for granted because of the equipment that they're in in real life. And then when you get into a race on iRacing, I know it's not the same as real life, but when everyone's in the same equipment, you really see people's talent shine. Next is our first full-time cup driver, and that is none other than Ross Chastain. Now, if you think that Ross Chastain would drive the same in iRacing as he does in real life, well, you'd be correct. Ross is extremely quick in iRacing with a 5.1k i rating and also a 12.71 career win percentage. But the thing about Ross is when he shows up, you know that he's either going to be checkers or wreckers. There's really no in-between usually. And it honestly makes the races more entertaining because usually the moves he makes aren't particularly dirty. But if you catch him in a race or you're watching somebody stream that has him in their race, there are going to be a couple feathers that are going to be rustled. From one cup driver to another, we're going to hop to William Byron, Mr. Learned on a Computer himself. Right now, William has a 5,000 I rating, but he is much quicker than his I rating seems to suggest. If you look, he has a 24% career win percentage. I know when I raced William Byron, I almost never had the pace that he had. It's just the one thing with him is he tends to give up on races very quickly if something goes wrong. I've seen William alt F4 out of a race after making slight contact with someone on the racetrack just because the car wasn't driving that good anymore. But right now, William doesn't do a ton of officials. He's working a lot with his Coke Series team, doing a lot of testing with them, working with their pros, and honestly, he's probably even faster now because of it. Next, we got another driver in the Xfinity series who you really would take the talent for granted of a lot, and that would be Ryan Vargas. Ryan has been racing a lot in the past couple years, and I've done a few races with him and I've seen him on streams a lot, and over the past couple years, he's gotten very, very quick. Right now, his I rating sits at about a 5,700, and he has a 7.9% career win percentage. And for as good as he's doing on regular oval tracks, I think where Ryan shines the most is on super speedway tracks. I always see him towards the front giving really good pushes, getting really good runs, very, very skilled on the super speedway tracks. So maybe watch out for him in real life if he's able to get a good motor under him for one of those races. And now we're going to cross that 6,000 I rating barrier with somebody who I think is the strongest I racing NASCAR person on this list today. 
and that would be Josh Berry. Josh is a two-time Pro Series champion in iRacing, which a lot of people don't really know. And he has a 36.7% win percentage on his account, with 2,600 starts over about a decade or so, a little over a decade. Josh is really, really good at saving his tires, and I've had the pleasure to race him a lot in the past couple of years. And every single time, every time I feel like I'm able to get a jump on him, outdrive him for a little bit in the first bit, he just proves to me time and time again that he understands tire saving on this service better than almost anyone else, and he'll just gobble me up every time. And I really think that Josh is extremely fast for iRacing and probably is pro level still if he really wanted to commit to it. But unfortunately, he has some more important things right now. And moving on, we're going to go to another full-time Xfinity Series driver, Anthony Alfredo. Now, Anthony has a 6400i rating with a 13.6% lifetime win percentage, but a 22% win percentage this year. Anthony has really raised his game in the past year or two doing a lot of streams, a lot of YouTube content, and really getting good at specifically the B-Fixed and the A-Fixed car. And because that's something I don't drive very much, I really haven't been able to race with him too much ever since he's gotten a lot more competitive in iRacing. But I know that from watching streams and watching his streams that he is insanely quick, and especially with his eSports team, they're all building speed very, very quickly. And next up, we're going to go to another full-time Xfinity driver, Alex LeBay. Alex is a 6500i rating with a 21% lifetime win percentage and he kind of came out of nowhere in 2020 during lockdown and really just won a ton of races and shot way up there but he seemed to have fizzled off a little bit in terms of participation in the last year or so but earlier this year he did show up to one of our ARCA SOF races and kind of learned that ARCA farmers are pretty serious. I think he got 13th that race or something but Regardless, Alex is super quick, especially in the B car and the C car, and I know there were times last year where he was faster than me in the ARCA car as well. And finally, we're going to talk about the two full-time NASCAR drivers who have the highest I ratings, both of them in the truck series, funnily enough, starting with Carson Hosevar. Carson is a 7.4k on his main account, where he has a 28% lifetime win percentage, which is pretty massive, but he mainly runs his alt account these days in officials. Even on that account, though, he still has a 20% win percentage, but he is known to be a bit of a problem causer in races. He'll cause a few wrecks, uh, similar to Kraus, but not quite as bad of a reputation from many, but there were a couple instances in Road to Pro that really made some people angry with him in the community. But other than that, Carson is super duper quick. If you see him in trucks, he's usually out front, and he's always willing to shake things up on a late race restart or something. And finally, we have the man himself, Ty Majeski, with an absolutely insane 10,763i rating and a 76.31% win percentage lifetime. Now, despite all this, I have never raced against Ty on a NASCAR oval because basically Ty only does the short tracks in iRacing, not really venturing out to uh, NASCAR much, and if he does, it would usually be on his alt. But even with then, I have never raced with Ty before, so I'm never really confident to say how good he is at the NASCAR ovals, but if it's anything short, you know that it's probably going to be impossible to pass him. Alright, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you want to see part 2 with some bigger name drivers who are a little less active, and also some part-time guys who are a little more active, along with some retired guys who you may not expect to be on iRacing. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you all on the track.